I wanted to welcome everybody. My name is Grace Shemaine, and I'm the president of the League of Women Voters of Texas. I go by she, her. Those are my pronouns. And I wanted, I wanted to welcome you to this, uh, which is very interesting since this is a uh, webinar uh, for leagues in Texas all about welcoming. Uh, people in your community to the league and making, uh, ensuring that everybody feels comfortable uh, and uh, when they join the league and when they show up to help out because our mission is so incredibly important. Our mission is empowering voters and defending democracy. And we are nonpartisan, so we never support or oppose any political parties or political candidates, but we do take action on issues and we're very uh, we're, we are a political organization, so we are always working to engage everyone in our community to uh, uh, be a participant in democracy, uh, to uh, join in voting so that you get a true democracy going on in your community when more and more people uh, participate. And we are having incredible growth uh, right now with the use of Vote 411 all across Texas. I'm so proud of the league. More and more people are looking to the league to get their information before they go voting. And what I'd like to see, my vision is that we all learn today how to grow our own leagues, but also how to talk to our friends in other communities ones all across Texas that may not have a league and encourage them to start a league in their community because we have some vast areas where we, we really need uh, leagues started so that their communities have somebody to serve them in a nonpartisan way to uh, encourage them to vote, to register voters, to use Vote 411, to get candidate forums going uh, and to get the information out there, they need to participate in our democracy. So now is it is more important than ever that we grow the league, that we have sufficient members and, and, and that we serve all of our communities. So I wanted to welcome you to that. I am asking you at the end of this uh, webinar, if you want to hang in there put a little lipstick on or, or uh, uh, whatever you choose, uh, comb your hair and stay at the end and put on a smile. And one at a time, people who want to can say, welcome, welcome to the league. And we will make a short video with everybody, not at the same time, but one at a time saying, welcome to the league. And we'll make a short video and we'll share it with everybody. And it could be a way uh, uh, to welcome leagues, uh, welcome members to your league in your community. So if you want to hang in there after the webinar and we'll uh, offer that to whoever wants to participate. Thank you, go ahead. So excited to be here. Good evening. I'm Susan Majors from LWV Richardson and a member of the League of Women Voters of Texas Board of Directors. Perhaps many of you, like me, always look forward to the league's every other summer regional trainings. They were a wonderful opportunity for learning, for gaining skills to support the league, and for getting together with others from around a wide local area. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we were unable to plan face-to-face -face gatherings. However, training in ways to better serve the League of Women Voters is as important as ever. The Service to Local League Committee has been hard at work creating alternate ways to provide valuable training. The committee is chaired by Janice Richardson of the Lavaca County League. It is also ably led by Meg Scott Johnson of the Hill Country League. Others who joined me as the planning group were LWV Texas Director Linda Vaughn from Amarillo and LWV Texas Executive Administrator Eileen McMurr. We have put together the summer train, training series, a set of monthly online webinars and discussions for June, July, August, and possibly beyond. Many leagues responded to our survey and topics for the trainings were selected based on interest shown. Our webinar today 
The Welcoming League highlights subjects that were especially popular in the survey, engaging members and engaging the community to advance diversity and inclusion. We are very fortunate that three local leagues were willing and eager to share insights with us today in a way that reflects the league's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion at every level. Debbie Voss and Jessica Foreman of the Austin Area League and Janice Sittleman of the Hill Country League will cover member involvement. Then Linda Vaughn and Sonia Letson of Amarillo will cover community outreach. After their presentations, you will have the opportunity to select a bre breakout session led by members of one of the three leagues for conversations on the nuts and bolts of their topic. If you have not done so, please enter your name with your league in chat. However, there will not be an opportunity for questions you might enter in chat to be answered during the presentations. You can plan to bring your questions to a breakout session or to connect presenters directly at a later time. Before we get started, I'd like to highlight two different opportunities service to local leagues will be providing for continued learning and interaction. The first is for future online summer training sessions. They will be on second Thursdays of the month at 7 p.m. On July 8th, the topic will be civic learning and civil discourse to empower voters and strengthen democracy. This workshop will take a step back to look at the importance of constructive dialogue in a strong democracy and to tell of some resources leagues can tap into to set the table for more productive work in their community. On August 12th, the topic will be being league in this political environment led by former LWV US President Elizabeth McNamara and current LWV Texas President Grace Shemaine. My second invitation is specifically for those individuals who are local league leaders in the area of membership. We are planning monthly online conversations for mutual sharing of ideas and questions. Membership leaders will get together on third Thursdays at a time of day to be determined. If you would like to be a part of the conversations on membership, please note your interest in chat and stay to the very end of this evening's event for a poll to find the most workable time. Now let's get started with the topics of interest to local leagues chosen in our survey by you, beginning with engaging members, presented by LWB Austin area leaders, Debbie Voss and Jessica Foreman. Later, Debbie and Jessica will be joined by Carol King for a breakout session. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Jessica Foreman, the Director of Advocacy with the League of Women Voters Austin area. And I'm joined by my colleague, Debbie Voss, and she'll kind of be taking the lead here as we go through some of our uh, tips that her and Carol have compi compiled. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Susan. Uh, we want to share with you how the Austin Area League uses all of its committees to drive active involvement and increased uh, membership. So it isn't just the membership committee, it isn't just diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion, it's community relations, program, advocacy, voter service, communications, and membership and volunteer management, which is also uh, a part of our membership activities. So we'll flip a slide here. Austin. Austin is the fastest growing big city in the country, but it's also about uh, who is moving here. <clears throat> this is a college town with a highly educated workforce that attracts the tech industry. So we're sometimes called Silicon Hills. Since uh, tech brings younger families and singles to the metro and surrounding areas, Austin's median age has become 29.6 years young. A large segment of the population is uh, actively involved in social and political issues and uh, are inclined to align with the league's positions. And then of course, then there's the fact that Austin is the capital city 
where all the action and uh, joy and angst happens uh, every couple of years. Uh, Maybe more angst than joy some years. So, uh, so what has motivated so many people to join our league? You can see from, uh, from the slide here, we doubled between 2016 and 2018 after a wild presidential election and then a very competitive race for a senator two years later. So many uh, new members uh, have told us that they just didn't know what to do, you know, politically or socially, you know, after these elections. And um, so joining a reputable uh, nonpartisan group dedicated to defending democracy, to a lot of them seem like the, the right path. And even in a pandemic, uh, 2020, our numbers jumped as uh, the tension increased around uh, the November election and after. All right, we, uh, so we have been a high profile. Yes, we are high profile in this community. <clears throat> a lot of uh, volunteer deputy registrars, you know, VDRs in uh, Travis and Williamson and surrounding counties to Austin are attracted to the league's continuous registration efforts. And a lot of those folks have become members. Uh, we enjoy a very close working relationship with the Travis County Elections Office. As a matter of fact, the county tax assessor, collector, and voter registrar for Travis County is a very longtime uh, league member. Our community relations team uh, reached out to partner and engage with other nonpartisan groups. Uh, especially in underrepresented populations. So our LWV Austin team members joined Building Bridges uh, with NAACP and Go Austin, Vamos Austin. Then we had our partnership with APIAPA, which the translation is the Asian Pacific Islander American Public Affairs Association. Uh, and that came about through LWV Austin board member, Quinon Tran. Uh, we've translated the voter's guide into Spanish for, uh, for several years, but in 2020, that was the first year that we translated the voter's guide into both Chinese and Vietnamese with uh, the help of the Asian American community. Uh, we made uh, important alliances during the 2020 census especially in Hispanic and black communities, and uh, also brought in more members from those areas. So whenever we've got the, the voter's guide, when it's out in the newspaper and it's online and it's in vote 411, in the libraries, the theaters, the university campuses, you know, all over, uh, both donations and new members drastically increase. That's what we have seen for almost any election where we've got the voter's guide in play, in print. The communications team, and very important, uh, they have highlighted and amplified our activities through expanded social media, which is reaching a much younger audience than we were reaching in the past. But uh, now here we've got new members who say, when new and prospective members ask, oh, you know, uh, when do y'all meet? Uh, we have stumbled all over the place. Uh, well, you know, we meet four times a year. Uh, that wasn't getting it. So we put together monthly member and uh, public speaker events at our office. The uh, program and advocacy committees produced in person Pino and policy nights with uh, noteworthy speakers and wine and cheese and cookies. But under COVID, we had to lose the Pino out of that. So we changed that event to people and policy and continued doing that on a monthly basis. Our community relations team uh, designed a Zoom series on Civics 101, Know the Vote which ran in 2020, 
and continues now in 2021 as Civics 201, understanding your government, if it can be understood. The request for civics information came over the phone from a young Hispanic woman who wanted to educate and inform her community and grew from there. It's, uh, all of those sessions are on our uh, YouTube channel. You can access it there from our website. Uh, next slide, Jess. Ah, we have not had a dues increase in over 10 years. Instead, we created a new level of membership that included a donation in the cost. So if you see from the screen, uh, our regular uh, membership was 60, is $60, you know, individual membership. But a sustaining individual membership is 100. Uh, a regular household membership is $90, but a sustaining household membership is $150. So uh, it was a good idea when it started. We didn't know, you know how many people were going to take us up on that. 55.6% of our members are sustaining members. So that uh, one of the things that uh, we're trying to incorporate right now is that we're working with Club Express and trying to make that understood in our setup under membership, uh, those different levels of, uh, of being a member. Our membership website is lwvaustin.org slash join us. And that's got all the fine reasons to become a part uh, of our league and how a sustaining membership uh, benefits us. Uh, we can put that, uh, put our website uh, in the chat. Jess, can you do that? Yes. Excellent. All right, we'll go to the next slide. All right, new member orientation. <clears throat> we hold a personal, uh, informal, and therefore welcoming and inclusive engagement with new and prospective members in a monthly new member orientation. Uh, these are normally held in person on a Saturday afternoon and it includes baked goods and coffee, but in COVID-19 times, it has been via Zoom. So we still feel that it is very important to immediately introduce volunteer opportunities to those people of looking for a way to be actively involved. So the membership uh, director, uh, which has been our very hardworking Carol King, uh, sends a welcome email as soon as someone joins, I mean, immediately. And that, uh, that precedes this new member orientation. Uh, but it contains a link to our e-learning overview of the leak. It also announces the date and the nature of this upcoming either a coffee or an orientation, whether it's going to be in person or Zoom, and when to expect an invitation. So we feel that uh, this engages that new member right away and tells them what's coming next, it tells them what to expect. And Debbie, I do have the example of the orientation I can pull up really fast. That's great. You should be able to see it now. This yeah. is a course we're doing with Rise Articulate, which for um, folks like nonprofit groups costs about $500 a year. Uh, and it's very, very easy to use if you don't have to be tech savvy. Um, and it lets you go through, basically, if you can create a PowerPoint of your membership information, you'll be able to put it into this kind of format. You don't need any technical background. You can add in videos, all kinds of things. Um, and we found it really effective. So um, I'll put this link in the chat after our session so you'll be able to access it to check it out. Yes, can you uh, click it on, uh, take an example of it, take a look at voter service. So that's describing, you know, uh, the voter's guide, uh, what, how, uh, what, how <laughs> it's made uh, first vote, 
you know, it's just for our high school seniors registering. Uh, register and vote, one of the largest parts uh, of our league, and uh, candidate forms. So we've taken each of the areas of the league program, community relations, organization, that's all part of the organizational structure. And uh, the last part is getting involved, a time uh, the time commitment that's in there, whether you just got an hour or if you got 80 hours a week. Uh, and how to volunteer. And that is, uh, we have changed around here during the year as we've been searching for the best way to get people engaged. But with this orientation, with the uh, Articulate 360, this new member orientation as a link to a new member, they're able on their own time, it only takes about 15 minutes to go through that, uh, that whole orientation but uh, with that already worked you know, through the e-learning, then in an orientation meeting, we're able to focus that meeting on their questions and interests. So we're having conversations with them one-on-one -on -one when we're hearing each other. Uh, we ask about their background and their skills and their passions and of course encourage them to take a look at our volunteer opportunities and committees pages. It's two different pages on our website. But I have found over the last uh, year, they are, if you see there is the, uh, just is scrolling through it, that's what, uh, that's the help wanted ad. <laughs> I think that's the committees, that maybe the, yeah, the committees page, the volunteer opportunities. Uh, no, there is this, we need somebody in all of those places. We have found that the folks who attend, you know, the coffee orientations, new members, are usually the ones that are willing to get involved and volunteer right away. You know, a lot of folks that join, they join to support us you know, with their dues. Uh, the volunteers, they're at our second Saturday gigs here. A uh, follow-up email is sent to each new member who is attending with uh, information on contacting the chair or the director in charge of their particular area of interest. And I also copy that league leader with the members contact information to put, put the two people together. Uh, retaining our members is equally important. Our membership director sends a thank you to every renewing member uh, though we're, we're hopeful that that's going to become a part of our automated uh, Club Express system as we're working through that. Uh, next slide. Oh. Well, I think it jumped. <laughs> Can we go back one, Jess? The website? Is that the Yeah, slide? there we go. Uh, instead of using uh, interest surveys, uh, we find that those become out of date pretty quick, you know, because member situations change. Uh, so we decided to come to them with uh, volunteer opportunities on our website. So we indicate which opportunities are for members only, and then ones that can be done by any volunteer. Volunteer uh, opportunities that we were just seeing on the, the website those are for immediate openings, you know, kind of like help wanted. And they require a specific skill and commitment. Like we're uh, looking for a, a layout person uh, on voter's guide right now. So, uh, volunteers can link up to a sign up genius page that describes the event and it also includes a sign up. So we use sign up genius a lot. We think that may change with some of the uh, tools that are available within Club Express. But for right now, sign up uh, Genius for booking uh, VDRs at registration events, uh, for voter's guide distribution, uh, bundling, uh, delivering first vote material to schools, which is something we were doing during COVID times, or to sign up uh, VDRs to go to the schools and register uh, the seniors. And we used it big time for uh, get out the vote during COVID, 
by delivering and getting volunteers to deliver and put up yard signs and uh, leaving voting information on targeted doorsteps you know, all over uh, Travis County. And then I just uh, showed the uh, committee's page that describes the standing groups like uh, Program Observer Corps, uh, Candidate Forum, Voters Guide. Uh, yeah, that's just going. Here's the committees coming up. Uh, Office Corps. So that, and that's all on uh, you know public part of our well the whole thing is public website. But there's a, a description of what each of those committees does. So if you are interested in any of those committees, uh, they're all open to all of our members. And they're able to get in touch with the applicable uh, director or chair. Our league calendar, we keep a big right up to date. And that includes all of our links to register or sign on to events. So if you, for some reason, lose that email that's got that link that you're looking for, you can't find it, you can go to the calendar and find the link. So we, we do keep that one on hand. I am the oldest person on our board right now, which is a weird feeling. And as a result of younger women and men joining and bringing these great digital talents and energy and becoming engaged in our work. They are from diverse uh, cultural backgrounds, genders and ages from all around the Austin area. Uh, our 2021, 2022 board is starting to actually reflect our community. So you can see both our officers and uh, directors looks a lot different than it did uh, when I joined in 2016. So if you would like to some, have any questions or want some nuts and bolts answers, I uh, hope that you will join us in the breakout session. On behalf of Carol, Jessica, and me, we thank you for letting Austin area tell its story. Yeah, and I'll be posting those links in the chat. Um, please feel free to borrow any of that information off the membership course. And if you wanna talk more about purchasing that, purchasing that software, I'm happy to, to chat with you as well. Our second presentation on engaging members is by Janice Zittleman from the Hill Country League of Women Voters. Janice will be joined by Bunny Bond for the breakout session later. Thank you. I'm hoping that I can share my screen. Thanks for allowing me to tell my story from the perspective of uh, a member of the League of Women Voters Hill Country. We are a much smaller league. Uh, currently, our membership stands at 70, and we cover uh, five counties. Nearly 10 years ago, on Women's Equality Day, I joined the League of Women Voters in Kerrville. I went to the meeting in response to an article I had seen in the local newspaper. As a new member, I didn't really know much about the League, but when I went to a meeting a few months later where members were discussing water usage and I saw consensus in action, I was hooked. My activity in the League increased as I attended meetings and saw more of the League in action. Many of you know Meg Scott Johnson, and she engaged me further by asking me to do small tasks such as calling the city secretary to get information on candidates. So we're talking about small towns here. The big thing that is important to us is a retention. And we believe that retention is built through relationships and time. I'm a semi-retired social worker 
and I know how important relationships are. It's through relationships with other people that we can solve problems, build new systems, and accomplish many important things. But relationships develop with time and perseverance. We start by greeting new members. And uh, there is a welcome letter and that provides information about our league. And I, I believe too that we want people to know that even if they feel they can only support the league by paying dues, that their membership is still important to us. Several years ago when I was um, president and Bunny Bond was membership chair, we um, began working uh, to introduce our new members to the league by uh, phone, making a phone call and inviting them to lunch. Since um, we've had the pandemic in the past year, we've had to rely on phone calls. I believe that it's important to contact new members via phone rather than email. In our area, I am still finding people that do not read their emails. Sometimes it's, it's um, they're overwhelmed. Um, and so we, we need to look for other ways to contact them. When we did the lunch dates, it, we found that it was great to be able to sit down on a one-to-one -one basis in a comfortable and an informal atmosphere. Uh, so Bunny and I would, uh, she would set them up and we would spend an hour to an hour and a half talking to them and um, going through, finding out what was important. We explored their passions and talents. Family was part of the topic. Um, most of the league is, is the majority of the membership are women and we know that families are very important. They're our primary support system no matter your gender, and they're a major focus of our life. Often by discussing family, we were able to, uh, were able to establish some connections. Um, maybe a sister had been a classmate or we knew something about someone in a prior hometown. Um, so that was an important part of the conversation. We also explored their careers and their geographical backgrounds. By doing that, their skills and abilities were highlighted along with their culture and heritage. And it, this provided us with some idea of, of how they identified themselves. Of course, it's important to learn their reason for joining and their, uh, what goals they have in the League of Women Voters. Many will often say they want to register voters, but they will also have some other ideas. It's good to find out if there's been past experience with the League of Women Voters. Um, if someone's totally new, they are going to need more information about the organization, about our nonpartisanship, about the president as spokesperson, about the League issues and advocacy. If they've had experience in the league, um, we use that as um, an opportunity to learn more about how other leagues can do things. So we're establishing the relationship. We want to build on that. Once you know some things about the individual, be sure to ask them to participate in events or suggest some ways they might volunteer. Uh, as was previously stated, we know that if we can engage someone quickly in some activity, they're much more likely to um, continue their membership and enjoy their membership. We know there's many opportunities, especially voter registration, get out the vote events, candidate forums, distribution of flyers, observer core, and so on. But 
by taking a role, the member is going to feel productive. They're going to get to meet other members and learn to know other inspiring people. Um, they'll learn to know more about their league and they're going to develop skills and they're going to be enthusiastic about doing more in the league. Um, when it comes to membership renewal time, we have found that the automatic renewal notice hasn't always worked. And we followed up with phone calls, uh, probably not to everyone that we should have. When you're making those um, phone calls, it's important to, uh, to take time to renew your acquaintance. Um, what you know about their family, you might comment on some Facebook posts you've seen, some common interests. Um, review the accomplishments of our local league. And remember, you can recall times when you've worked together on candidate forums or voter registration events and things like that. I believe it's also important um, to, um, to um, remind people of the mission, vision, and value statements for the League of Women Voters. Um, this, um, I, I'm going to go back here. I've skipped something, I apologize for that. One of the things that we found in uh, building these relationships was um, when it was time this spring for um, the nominations to the to build some uh, positions on the leadership team. We had uh, several new people who were willing to accept a nomination. And I believe it's because of the relationships that had been established in the league. This past year during the pandemic, it's been hard to do these kind of things, but I believe that the work that we've been doing long-term has paid off for us. It's also important in these small communities to highlight community recognitions. When you see something in the local paper about someone being recognized as volunteer of the year or teacher of the month, uh, make that a news event. It shows their leadership abilities and skills. Compliment them on that and um, tuck that information away. It's all, so I believe that it's important be, to follow up on life events, family, death, illnesses, and births. We know how important our families are. And in the small towns, we often learn about events through our local newspapers. By acknowledging these events, we show that we care about the person. When you're doing so, you need to be cautious not to violate privacy. If someone shares something that is not public knowledge, it's okay to ask them if they would mind if you shared this with others in the league. But if you don't know if it's okay, don't share the information. I had talked about membership renewal and I wanna say that retention is a team effort. Everything in the league is a team effort. Um, it's not the membership chair's total responsibility to um, work on this and follow up. Um, because we have five counties, three of our counties have unit leaders. Those unit leaders know the people in their counties on an individual basis and they can support the membership chair by making phone calls and keeping up with what's going on. The president of the league, of course, plays an important role sometimes by just reaching out and asking someone to volunteer uh, for something that we need help with. And it's also important to recognize our longtime members who know the membership and when we see that someone 
that's been a longtime member has kind of fallen off the radar. We want to uh, take the time to try to find out something. And here's another way, enlist longtime members who know those other members. When you are contacting these members, it's important to remember um, DEI. And I believe a way to incorporate DEI is to just check in. Is the member, is the meeting location and time workable for you? Um, do you have um, needs such as childcare or adult care? Is transportation a problematic? Is, um, is mobility an issue? One thing I believe that this pandemic has provided for us is Zoom or other mediums such as that so that we have the potential for continuing to engage our membership in events uh, that they cannot attend personally. And I hope that we will uh, incorporate that. We are talking about doing hybrid meetings in League of Women Voters Hill Country, especially since we cover such a large geographical area. I um, don't know all the members in our league at the present time, but I have developed members develop relationships with a good number of the members. Even though it's taken time, things have shifted because I moved to a different county. And, and then of course we've had this pandemic. It's just important to persist with engaging members. And the other thing that was mentioned earlier, it's important to remember to thank them when they do volunteer in any way, even if they're just showing up at a meeting, it's important to recognize that their participation is very useful. And I'll be happy to talk to you later in the nuts and bolts session. Our next topic will be engaging the community to advance diversity and inclusion. We welcome Linda Vaughn and Sonia Letson of LWV Amarillo. Good evening, everyone. We're so happy to be here with you. Sonia and I decided tonight that we're gonna do something just a little bit different. We're gonna do an interview and we're gonna talk about the things that we all know about, but sometimes have to be reminded. You know, we all look at our community outreach in a certain way. And what we would like to do, we'd like to share a couple of our slides with you and talk about how we in the Amarillo League of Women Voters are advancing diversity and inclusion in our league. And we asked Eileen to do our slide control because we realized with two of us here together, we might both reach for the computer at the same time. So Eileen is actually going to bring up our first slide and she'll be in control of that and we'll just let her know when to advance those slides. Okay, so um, Sophie, if you would allow me to share because I'm not able to share right now. Aha, okay. And while that's coming up, I'm gonna ask Linda, when we talk about the communities in our outreach that we want to contact and advance diversity and inclusion, who are we talking about? What groups are we talking about? We're talking about every group. We're not just talking about women or young women or older women or men. We're talking about men. We're talking about different ethnicities, thinking about all of the the cultures that we have in our area, and I know that Austin has a lot of them also in Houston area, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, all of those areas. But Amarillo has probably one of the most diverse communities that I've seen in a lot of places. So we are looking at different genders, different languages, 
the sexual orientation. Uh, we're different at looking at different abilities. We're looking at different incomes. We're looking at all of these, these types of people in our community. And we're also talking about how in the world do we advance that diversity? Well, you can only do that. And I'm very proud of our, and, I, and I'm not just saying this because you're here. I'm very proud of it. And I want everybody to know that Amarola really make, puts forth the effort to make sure that it is all inclusive. No one is a no little idea, no big idea. Everybody is welcomed and everything is introduced on the same level. You know, when we go out into the community, I have noticed that it's so easy to put things in just one particular place, but we haven't done that. And I'm very proud of that fact because what we do is we go out into all sections of the community. And I know that all of these other ladies and gentlemen do the same thing, but I'm really proud of the thing that we're doing. And I want to just impress upon people the fact that you have to make sure that you put an assertive effort into doing those kinds of things. Now, as we next look at some of the things that we're going to be talking about, let's look at our, uh, how do we include every community? As I was talking about that. So Sonia, how do we include every community? And our, and here's a question that, I, that was asked of me. Are there some that are more worthy than others? Hmm. Well, of course, we're trying to reach every diverse group to get them involved in the league, or at least to bring the league's message and education to them. But I would say that our league has taken a particular interest in educating high school students about the importance of voting. And we've made a concerted effort to try to reach this next generation of voters because our democracy depends on them. So while we also go into our senior living centers and our assisted living centers to help those voters register and fill out their applications for ballot by mail, we do make a concerted effort to make sure we are reaching our high school students and registering them to vote and educating them. So we're proud of the fact that we got into 11 of the 14 high schools in our two county area and this year, shooting for 14 out of 14, we have some private high schools that, that are, uh, are mounting resistance to having us come, but we are working on them. And we're working on how to teach these students about the importance of voting. We've taught classes in our high schools, but in the pandemic time, there were some schools that would not let us register students in person. So one of our members created this flyer that we attached to a voter registration card along with our bookmark, and those were given to every eligible senior in that high school. So, well, that is a great way. That was one of the things that we really enjoyed. Uh, and I talked to some of those high school students because I, I work with kids. You know, as a past educator, they always ask you questions. So they really liked that. And it was so good because they could just look at it real quick because, you know, sometimes minds go like this. And I know mine does, it just switches, switches levels. But this was a great way to do that. Um, you know, everywhere that people gather, as we look next, I wanted to ask you this question. How do we meet as many, with the Emerald League, how do we meet as many different groups as possible? What have we been doing? The first thing I would say about that is we always say yes. When someone says, could you do voter registration at our coffee shop? Could you be at this particular nonprofit event? Could you be at this festival uh, for Martin Luther King Jr. Day? We say, yes, we can. Let us get our volunteers together. And we try to go everywhere we're asked and we try to brainstorm places we haven't been and would like to go to reach a whole new segment of people that we haven't ever reached before. In 2019, before we were not able to gather in person so much, 
we hosted as a partner an opening of a show at our historical museum about women's suffrage. And here are four of our members who were there registering voters at the museum. We also went to our comic convention and dressed up and had a booth and registered people who probably would never see us at any other location. And last year, we also went into our jails. We offered to help and did help develop procedures to help inmates get ballots by mail or register to vote and also registered the corrections officers in the jail. So we have tried to go every single place we can think of to go. Now, speaking of groups that we never thought of, you thought of a group, and it's shown on our next slide, uh, that we've never sought out. And then you made a plan to go after them. That's right. Um, I am one of these people that I think, I think I've got a magnet attached to me that says, okay, call her. So I had a group out of Dallas contact us to see if we could put together a dis food distribution. So in three days, we pulled together this huge food distribution, had to go out into the community and get all these people to give us things, you know, how you do those kinds of things. Well, I called you and I said, the last time we did something, I we had the league, the Emerald League out, and they were giving out flyers, they were giving out bookmarkers, and we have to stay and clean up. Hmm. Those were all over the place. There were some here, some there. And I asked you, I said, could I, after I asked my husband, I already told him what I was going to, I said, could I get a, a, a little sticker that we place on these boxes? Because every, every household is going to get something, everyone that comes through. But here it is, early voting, and we need to make sure that people know and we don't want them to just throw it out the window or stick it in the box and throw it away once they take all the food out of the boxes. So I got 9,000 of those printed. And I had some of, the, some of the volunteers came, some of them were ladies who were in their wheelchairs and they sat there and they stuck these on the boxes and you'll see there in the picture. That's what they did. Those went to 9,000 different homes. Those boxes went out. And I do know that people looked at them because we made sure that they were put in such a place that they could not help but see them. So the voting early was a good way to get out. You know, one of our members, uh, Catherine English, she designed this for us because I was thinking, I am not good on the computer. And I called you and you said, oh, well, let's call Catherine and see. And she sent me three different designs. We, I sent them off, had all those printed up, got them in there. And that morning we had those ladies in there just, and there were two, two men who sat in there and they did all this in October. So we were, we were excited to do that. But you know, communities, there are a lot of communities that we reached all different segments of the community that we reached with this communication. Exactly. You know, um, when we're looking at that on our next slide, we're talking about visibility. And Sonia, if you are going to advance diversity and you are going to advance inclusion in our league, and I'd like for you to tell the ladies here and gentlemen uh, in the community at large, how do we go about doing that? We touched on this a little earlier, and we go about doing it by being visible everywhere we can be visible. And one thing we do, I'm going to put this up here on our little, uh, our little window. We have name tags, we board members, and we wear those name tags all around town to the grocery and every place else, and people will say, what's LWV? And then we have a chance to tell them. And that's just one example. Parades. We try to get in all our major parades and walk as the league. We hand out voter registration cards. We talk to voters. We get applause. We have our candidates forums. We do them in person when we can. We've done them by Zoom. And last time for local elections, we did them through a partnership with PBS and they were broadcast on television. And I think we'll continue to do that. 
that gives us wonderful visibility. And we do things like the election worker appreciation communications that we develop so that it's not about voting. It's not about anything else. It's about civility. The league's message is not just we need you to register and vote. It's also we need you to be a participant in a vibrant democracy. And that includes civility and civics education. So we believe all these things are important, but mainly we've got to be everywhere. We've got to show up everywhere. We've got to try to get our name and our message out everywhere. And then looking at that next one, when I when you talked about that and I heard you say, um, you were talking about online communication. That next slide is going to, and I want you to um, answer this question. How do, you, how do you enhance diversity online? You know, our online communications has been a wonderful adventure for us, and we have different levels of technical expertise. But probably as in your league, there are some people who can put together a graphic like our wonderful Catherine English did so many things for us as our director of online communications. And she did these voting plans with various of us involved in the photographs, men, women. Um, she did all kinds of graphics and we continually update our online communications through Facebook and the website and we're working on Instagram and other platforms that we hope to get our younger members involved in. These online platforms allow us a chance to communicate with all segments of the public and to have our volunteers exercise their creativity. So the online communication is a very important part of it, but we also realize just as, just as our push for Vote 411 to be a part of everyone's life, um, is a serious push that we make. We know that a lot of people in the Emerald area are not able to access online communications. And so there's an effort to get them broadband. So we have to do our communications in various ways. That brings me to this question, which is depicted on our next slide. What about our tried and true methods uh, yes. of outreach to the community? Uh, How can yes. that be used to advance diversity? That voter's guide. You know, that voter's guide is placed in so many places. I was listening to the Austin League when they were talking about getting their voters guide out there. You know, Amarillo is not a huge place, but there are so many corners to touch. And one of the places that we, this year, that I was taught, that I went into, I will always go there to get a breakfast sandwich or whatever it is. And the owners are Vietnamese. No, they're loud. And uh, she said, do you have any of those papers? And I was like, because uh, I had my name tag on. And I said, ah, League of Women Voter Papers. Yes, I do. I've got five in my car. Now, we are trying to make sure that we get into all the areas that we go in, that we can go into. And another place, the Black Barbershop. That's one of those sacred grounds, you know. Well, I have no problems. I go into the barbershop and I bebop in and make sure they have them. And so talk to the barbers and they love to talk about what's in here. And when I told them, you know, you can take that paper with you. You may not can take your phone, but you sure can take this paper. And it is so good because people need to know and we know that we're talking to the choir, but that's okay. We still need to be reminded that this is how we get everything out to the people. We educate them using this guide because as you said, a lot of times they don't have the internet access, but on our page, we put that little uh, skew code there and they can just do it from their phones. All the young people know how to do it and they're showing grandparents how to do it. So, yes. so one last thing about the Voters Guide, which I'll show you up in our little window, is we print our sponsors, both business and individual, on the back of our guide. And that's another way to reach out to our community. But this is our final slide. 
And I want you to tell us a little about this poster and its history, but the question that I want to bring up is how do we adapt our existing messaging to advance diversity? Well, that slide, we combine the old with the new. When uh, that poster, you know, most people will look at it and they'll see Uncle Sam up there. Well, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam was the only person we saw up there with his finger out. And then later on, there was a Caucasian woman on there. So one of our members, Robert Goodrich, been with the league many, many years. He said, you know what? We need to do just a little bit different. We need to make this look like all of us. We need to make sure that we are putting our pictures, our talk, everything where our mouth is. If we're talking about it, we need to let people see that we're about it. He was so adamant about that, that we got this all done and we we're putting it out and people were excited about it. It was, you know, just a little poster does so much. And I want you ladies and gentlemen to know that just a small little poster will do a lot, a lot to bring about uh, how you want people to see you, how you want, and when I say you, I'm talking about your lead. How do you want people to see your lead? Well, you look at our poster there, and I'm telling you, people see all of these things. But so you, was you were telling me something about this poster that I honestly didn't quite hear all of that conversation. There was something about when we started using this poster, something was happening. Well, you know, we um, had this poster designed when Robert said, let's make it more inclusive. And we, we used the print shop that we normally use for things. And they used some images that were not copyright free. And we love that poster. And we printed some and we put them around town. And, uh, and then when we wanted to share that poster with others, uh, we were asked, now, are these copyright free images? And we had to go back to them and say, we didn't think about asking that. So if you do use images, Make sure they are copyright free or they're in the public domain. And the League of Women Voters of the U.S. has a lot of stock images. But this one has been redesigned with all available images. And we would share it with any league that wants it if you'll just let us know. And we would be happy to tell you more in the breakout session about our league and our efforts in advancing diversity. All right. Thank you so much for letting me interview you. And thank you. And vice versa. Now Janice will get us started in the breakout sessions. Hi everybody, I am Janice Richardson. I'm president of the League of Women Voters in Lavaca County. And I also um, am on the LWD Texas board and chair of the Service to Local Leagues Committee. And I am so excited by all these presentations. I'm just, overwhelmed by the information and I'm just like, so thankful to all the presenters. So thank you all so much. Let me tell you how the breakout sessions are gonna work. And I know there may be some people who are a little apprehensive about, about them, but um, they're gonna be really easy. Uh, if you're like me, you have a list of questions and are eager to get some nuts and bolts and information so you can try some of the ideas we heard about with your own league. So we'll all have the opportunity to get to those nuts and bolts. Um, we're going to head to the breakouts. I suspect that we want to all be in all breakouts, but of course that's not possible due to the time we have tonight. But the good news that all of our, is all that our presenters tonight are Texas League people, and we'll be happy to hear from you later if you can't join their breakout tonight. So here's how it's gonna work. We'll have three breakout rooms tonight, one for Amarillo, uh, one for the Austin area, and one for the Hill Country League. When we enable the breakout rooms, you'll see a pop-up box on your screen with these three breakout rooms listed, each uh, with a box that says join. What you need to do is click on your preferred breakout room and then say yes when you're asked if you really wanna join that room. And then a few seconds, you will be transported to your breakout room. Everything there should work just as it does in the main room. 
We're going to have about 15 minutes in our breakout rooms, and you'll know that time is about up when you'll see a warning that the breakout room will close in 30 seconds. When the breakout rooms close, you'll be transported magically back to the main room. If you have problems getting to your breakout rooms, we'll be watching for you and we'll find some help to help you get where you want to go. So let's get started and open the breakout room. Thank you for joining us this evening for our summer training workshops on the Welcoming League. And somebody let me know if you can hear me. I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, you will not want to miss the next two webinars in the summer training series. On July 8th at 7 p.m., our topic will be civic learning and civil discourse to empower voters and strengthen democracy. It's a mouthful because it's an important subject. Uh, there'll be another important topic to consider on April 12th. We'll be looking at being league in this political environment. And that one will be led by Elizabeth McNamara and Grace Shemaine. You mean August 12th? Excuse me? You mean August 12th, you said April 12th. Oh, well, yes, I do indeed <laughs> mean August 12th. I also hope that those of you who are membership leaders for your local leagues will plan to participate in our monthly online conversations. Membership coordinator, Susan Majors, that's me, will convene the group for sharing ideas and questions with one another. We will get together on third Thursday, starting in July. And in addition to standing, staying on and saying welcome, I hope you'll stay on a few minutes more if you're interested in the membership conversations to participate in a poll on the preferred time on those Thursdays. 